Hi everyone, I am Madhusudan Raj, your host. This is 5th August 2012 and I am again in front of you with my weekend review of major economic news in the Indian economy. So I'll begin today with a lot of RBI related news, mostly coming from the Governor and the Deputy Governor. So last Friday, uh, RBI was out with the Monetary Policy Review and in that monetary policy review, RBI Governor Dubi Subarao said that he is very much concerned about the inflationary pressure into the Indian economy. So he is not going to change the uh, repo rate, the bank rate. And he also kept the credit reserve ratio, the CRR, unchanged, basically citing, as I said, uh, inflationary concerns. So on one side, uh, RBI uh, Governor Subarav is very much worried about inflation and he said that he wants to control inflation. Now, controlling inflation itself is a bogus thought. You don't want to control inflation. But in any case, if we just for the sake of argument, we agree with Subarav that he wants to control inflation, even then there are a lot of discrepancies between his words and his actions. So on one side he is saying that he wants to control inflation and on the other side on the same day although he did not change the or reduce the repo rate and the CRR credit rate of ratio but he did reduce the SLR the statutory liquidity ratio the you know percentage of total reserves which commercial banks will have to keep in terms of different kind of you know, security and those securities are mainly in the form of government bonds. So he cut the FLR by 1% from 24% to 23% which release total 60,000 crore rupees into the Indian economy. So on one side he is saying that he wants to control inflation on the other side by reducing SLR from 24 to 23% and by releasing 60,000 crore rupees he actually created inflation. You know, now you are listening to me since past many video blogs and since my many analysis, so you understand that creation of money out of thin air, money and credit out of thin air is inflation. The rising prices are just one effect of inflation. So basically by creating this 60,000 crore rupees out of thin air and releasing it into the economy, so Barao actually created inflation, so there is a discrepancy between his words and his action. And what is important for all of us is to see his actions, not his words. Because actions speak louder than words. So he is not basically interested in controlling inflation. He is just creating money out of thin air since, you know, the you know establishment of the central bank, the central you know, reserve bank of India. That is what is the function of central bank is to create money out of thin air. So it is this is not going to result into controlling of inflation, you know, forget about removal of inflation. This is not even going to control inflation. Sixty thousand crore rupees which is going to enter into the economy is going to distort the capital structure of the economy, it is going to transfer a lot of wealth from the productive class of society to the unproductive class of society. It is going to punish the savers, the hardened people who are, you know, earning hardened, you know, money and saving. They are going to be punished. People who are with stable income, this is going to create, you know, uh, price inflation. It's going to, you know, result into higher prices of various goods and services. You know, correctly stating, it is going to reduce the purchasing power of rupees so it's not going to you know control inflation and actually Subaram created more inflation not only this the next the very next day you know the day on which uh, RBI announced with uh, this reduction into SLR the very next day State Bank of India reduced their home and car loan lending rate by half a percent point five percent not only that the National Housing Bank also reduced home loans rates by 1%. So what is going to happen now is this is going to, this, this reduction in interest rate on home loans and car loans is going to prolong the already big bubble which is building up into the real estate and auto sector of the Indian economy. So this is just that, that bubble is ballooning more and more, you know, with this reduction in interest rate. This, this is prolonging the boom. And what is going to happen? The longer the boom, 
the the you know longer the bust is going to remain what's going to happen is maybe it's not going to remain very longer if RBI and if central bank and if the government stop intervening during the bust time but I know they will intervene so it's going to prolong not only it's going to prolong it's going to be very very painful the correction is going to be very painful because the male investment is distorting the whole production structure the whole capital structure of the Indian economy so correction will be very violent later on the more they prolong this real asset bubble and this car auto on you know auto sector bubble the more spectacular the bust will be later on and and that is coming you know the moment the real interest rate will start to go up that bubble will pop because right now the real interest rates are very low almost negative because the uh, consumer retail inflation is something like 10% even in government's official figures and these interest rates are around 8%, 9%, so basically the real interest rates are in negative right now. But the moment those real interest rates will start to go up, and they will go up one day, they cannot remain negative or even at very low level for a very long period of time, and they will go up this bubble in the real estate market and in the auto market will pop, and at that time the correction will be very violent. You know, the male investment should be liquidated, and it will be liquidated by the market forces, but as I said, the economy will be in a lot of trouble. It's going to remain in whack for a very long period of time. Alright, so this is what RBI is doing. On the other side, the nature is also dealing kind of a death blow to the Indian economy. So now officially, government agriculture ministers, uh, I know uh, Minister Sarat Pavar announced drought in India this monsoon season. There are deficient rains and because of that, agricultural sector is going to be in trouble basically the western part of the country states like Gujarat Gujarat Maharashtra Rajasthan they are they are experiencing very deficient rains and these are the major agricultural you know sectors other parts of the country are also experiencing deficit rain so crop production is gonna be you know lower the problem is not with the nature the problem is with the government what is going to happen now is you know, immediately Sarat Pawar uh, announce uh, more than 19,000, 1900 crore rupees of financial package for farmer because what happened is the moment you have drought these farmers start clamoring for some kind of financial help from the government because they cannot manage anything on their own you know so many years of free money has crippled their skills these farmers are not in a position to farm their land on their own they cannot manage their farms on their own because of this, you know, centuries of, you know, habits of relying on government help. This is what happens. So, right now they're clamoring for help and government is always ready to, you know, distribute this freebie, this taxpayer's money basically to this, you know, to this, you know, very strong farmer's lobby. It's basically, you know, a voting constituency. So, they are very busy right now. So, it's probably announced more than 1900 crore rupees of financial package and he said we are going to help the farmer and we are going to help people we have to understand that when the minister is saying he is here to help us that's going to result into disaster as i said it's, he's not going to help these farmers he's going to corrupt their habits and you have to understand that these these farmers are you know they have lost their skills so badly that now whenever something goes wrong they immediately ask for government's help and when the government's help is not coming forward they immediately go and commit suicide. You must be knowing that the suicide rate, you know, amongst the farmers is very high in states like Maharashtra and had you know, in Andhra Pradesh. You know, you know, whenever bank stops giving, you know, some kind of loans or credit, or they ask for repayment of the loan, these farmers go and commit suicide because there's so much cripple. So it's not going to help anyone. That is just going to result into more and more human misery, more and more disaster for all of us. They also announced, you know, a 50% diesel subsidy for the farmers. They also decided to increase seed subsidy of various crops. This is nothing but, but pure inflation. This, you know, free money handout to the farmers is only going to result into higher prices of the products which they are going to buy in the market because they are not producing anything on the one side and on the other side government is giving a lot of purchasing power into their hands so when they will go and spend this money into the market that's just going to result into higher prices so we will all have to brace up for you know higher prices of different various kind of food products in the future the drought as i said on one side nature is 
putting us into trouble and the government is exacerbating our problems by creating inflation, creating money out of thin air and distributing that money to these farmers. The other thing which I want to discuss today with you very important which you know very very important thing which happened last week RBI deputy governor uh, Mr Chakraborty he gave some very shocking kind of statements statements to media and 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 by giving those statements what he did is he actually exhibited his lack of knowledge of monetary theory and history no that's the problem with this official policy makers polit polit you know politicians and diplomats and technocrats and neoclassical mainstream economists that they don't understand the monetary theory as well as they don't have any kind of sense of you know world monetary history and even if if they are having i think they are naive so they are trying to fool people let's see what rbi the puri governor chakraborty said he said that in order to reduce the prices of gold and in reduce you know, in, in order to basically reduce the government's trade deficit he says that indian should reduce gold tributes to god so he is saying that uh, indian people without reason because of tradition and religion and faith issues they keep on giving you know you know gold offerings to god and they must reduce the, this these offerings they must stop it he also said that they should also buy less gold for their marriages so basically mr chakraborty is telling all of us that uh the traditions which are going on since last 5000 years we should stop doing those things simply because his government's trade deficit is ballooning and why that trade deficit is ballooning he is not telling that you know people's buying of gold or people's offering gold to god has nothing to do with that it has everything to do with RBI his own institutions inflationary monetary policy from where these people are getting this free money which they are using to import gold from outside that money they are getting from RBI itself so if he is interested in lowering the trade deficit or removing the trade deficit he should stop depreciating rupee he should stop printing more you know rupee and that will you know bring down the trade deficit but anyways that's not the issue the issue is the kind of you know who breeds this this you know technocrats are having the kind of conceit of knowledge these people are having the arrogance which these people are having you know what not only that he said that you know and these statements are very bizarre and i'm quoting 90% of the gold demand is reality or to offer to god both have to stop the deputy governor noted that indian society's obsession with gold was an archaic idea of prehistoric times when india was a rich society of the abundas Wearing gold as an ornament was a culture when you were a rich society, when you were contributing to 30% of the GDP of the world. Today we have become a poor country. <laughs> we need to change our culture. All these statements are absolutely nonsense. On one side, the Prime Minister is saying, Manmohan Singh is saying that inflation is rising because India is becoming richer. and that's why people are demanding more goods and services and that's why prices are rising and on the other side RBI deputy governor chakraborty is saying that we are becoming poor so we should stop buying gold now you can only buy gold when you are rich that is completely nonsense you know gold buying has nothing to do with rich or poor you know both class of people rich and poor they both buy gold not because they want to offer it to god they want to offer it to god but the main purpose they buy gold because they want to keep the purchasing power of their wealth stable they want to you know maintain whatever purchasing power their hard and money is having especially in the time of this running of inflation which is a creation of mr chakraborty or rbi's own monetary policies why people are buying gold and silver other precious metals you know this precious metals and other hard assets because they want to keep their purchasing power stable you have to understand that gold is not just one another precious metal gold basically is market chosen money so people buy gold because they want to keep their cash holding instead of in, you know in paper currencies the rbi the useless rbi notes which are you know you know reducing and purchasing power day after day so they want to maintain that you know purchasing power that's why they 
you know buy gold well, gold is their final insurance policy gold is basically you know their their you know real wealth their cash balance their insurance policy gold is a money and its major function is common medium of exchange and the second function is store of value and gold is very good at storing value for a very very long period of time and at different places also if you see historical you know <coughs> price data of gold or value of gold then it, it keeps the purchasing power intact for a very long period of time and that is the reason why people are buying gold and silver and other commodities because they you know hard assets because they want to as I said maintain the purchasing power of their wealth Mr. Chakrabarti people are not foolish they are not just buying gold jewelry for their marriages they know what they are doing you don't have to tell them they should you know how they should protect their lives they are protecting their lives lifetimes earning against your inflation which you have created not only that, you know, he was not stopping at this this kind of stupid you know, arguments. He, he went on and, you know, gave few more. I'm just quoting again. Both need to change, said Mr. Chakraborty, stressing on the need for a shift in people's social and cultural attitudes towards gold to cut its demand. This, he feels, will help ease the current account situation, especially since investing in gold is non-productive. Investing in gold is not non-productive, Mr. Chakraborty. As I said, people are not investing in gold. People are keeping their cash balances into gold. Gold is money, and it is very productive because it is going to. Why people hold cash balance? Because they want to, you know, have some kind of control over the uncertain future. The uncertainty is very high right now because the government's policies are very uncertain and RBI is creating inflation so that is also raising this uncertainty and that's the reason why they're keeping this money on you know in the cash balances so that they can have more control over their future so money's productivity is you know it gives you control over the uncertain future it's not non-productive it is money you have to understand that he said that if uh, if Mr. Chakrabarty could have had his way, he would have Indians donating only 2 karat gold instead of the regular 22 karat 2 temples. So if, you know, if he's given kind of some kind of, you know, uh, executive powers, then he will stop us from offering 22 karat jewelry. You know, he will want us to only offer 2 karat. Well, that is not your business, Mr. Chakrabarty. You know, I just want to ask one important question. If you think that gold is so non-productive, as you're saying, and and gold is not good investment then why your own institution RBR purchased more than 200 tons of gold in the year of 2010 why RBI is keeping more than 500 tons of gold into your reserves you think we are foolish you know don't we see that you guys are buying don't you understand that most of the central bankers are net buyers of gold now since last two years so so stop, stop telling us all this thing and stop fooling people, stop misguiding people, you know. If your actions are, you know, speaking louder than words, then we know that you guys are buying gold. I understand why you are after gold, because gold is an indicator of governments, you know, profligate expenditures, inflation. The more you print money, the more gold price is going to go up. He's saying that... Going even further to drive in his point, Chakrabarti claimed there was no interest in value in the speculative investment of gold. I said it's not investment, it's not speculation, it's basically holding your cash balance. He urged those in the financial world like chartered accountants to explain to the people the non-productivity of investment in gold. Yeah, so chartered accountants are going to tell people that they should invest in stock market. Stock market is going down since last many years. Gold is in bull market since last 12 years and if you see the whole BSC index in terms of gold then it is just downhill don't look at it in terms of rupees just convert everything into gold and then see where the stock market where the currencies where the bonds where the mutual funds all these paper promises investments are going they are going downhill against gold gold is the only you know only you know if you want to use this word commodity which is going up right now <coughs> Hitting another nail, he added, the precious metal cannot be used for anything productive and gains in value only because of a mad rush for the commodity among 
speculators. You have to understand why there is a Madras and the Madras hasn't even even started. Not many people are buying gold around the world right now. The mania phase is still into the future. The day this will end, the price will fall sharply. So you don't understand the monetary theory. It's not about price of gold, it's about value of gold. As I said, it is a store of value. It's gonna keep your purchasing power intact. Doesn't matter if price falls or rises. Not only that, not stopping at this kind of absurdities, you know, he really shocked people by his next argument. He said that Chakrabarty also said there was an urgent need to reduce oil imports. The way to go about this was using more and more bicycles. So how Mr. Chakrabarty wants to reduce the oil imports? He wants Indian populace to use more and more bicycles. Okay, so here is my advice, Mr. Chakrabarty. You want us minions to drive bicycles and because you are masters, why don't you set an example by going to your office on bicycles in the first place? You start using bicycles first and then tell us whether we should buy and use bicycles or not. You know, this is absolute hypocrisy. You know, they want, you know, slave population, minions, basically, common people to ride bicycles, but they will go into foreign imported luxury, very costly gas guzzling cars to their offices and everywhere. Stop being hypocritical, Mr. Chakrabarty. If you really want to reduce the oil imports, stop printing money, right? You know, this man, the RBI, you know, resign from your job and go and do some kind of productive work into the market economy. That will help all of us. Right, so not only this, you know, uh, last but not least, RBI Governor Subarao also, you know, a couple of days back says that he wants people to use more electronic payment systems. Yeah, so that they can loot us more. Right now, because we are using cash, these people cannot control our lives. You know, you have to understand that gold gives you freedom. It's not about investment, you know, because when you are outside this corrupted financial system, you can maintain your privacy, you can maintain your freedom. They cannot inflate very rapidly because the system is not under their control. So I will advise people to use more cash instead of using their phony, you know, electronic payment system. What will happen in the electronic payment system is they will just increase the digits. They don't even have to print physical notes and that way it will be highly inflationary. In a free market capitalist economy, this kind of you know, innovations like debit cards and electronic payment system is very good because it reduces the demand for money. So you don't have to, you know, have a lot of gold. Like for example, whatever gold you have in reserves, you can, you know, you know, you can trade that through, you know, uh, electronic payment system. But that that electronic payment system is very dangerous when all the banks are working under the fractional reserve banking standard. And you know they are all backed by this central bank, so that is highly inflationary. So my advice to people is not to use electronic payment system. Use it only when it is absolutely necessary. Maybe you are doing a business, you are making some kind of transactions. Only then. Otherwise, you should use. You know, you should keep on using cash. I know they will want to ban it, but you know, as long as they are not doing it, we should keep on using cash because that's what is going to give us freedom, and then that is what is going to keep track on you know inflation and everything um, you know basically they'll have to print money so they will not be able to do that you know uh, very well so that's why that's going to create a check on government's profligacy and RBI's you know lunatic policies all right so thank you very much for watching me this week and I'll be back with more news next week bye bye